Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in Hearts of Iron 4 using a special mod called Dreams of Austria. So welcome to the mod. This mod uses dynamic focus trees, meaning not all national focuses will be revealed at the beginning of the game. Progressing through the focus tree will unlock new trees and more national focuses. So don't be alarmed if a tree looks too small. Orange ones mean that that'll unlock new focuses and branches, while blue ones will usually bypass Germany's Anschluss focus tree. If there are certain ideology, shut up and let me play, and we're going to begin with the Fatherland Front. Established in 1933 by the previous Austrian Chancellor, Engelbert Dolfus, the Fatherland Front is a Dudist political organization and a vein closer to Italy and Spain's Dudism, rather than that of the Reich. Essentially a coalition government, the Fatherland Front was formed from the merging of the Christian Social Party, the Landbund, elements of the Austrian Catholic clergy, and the paramilitary group, the Heimwehr. Having led Austria through two short but brutal civil wars, the Front governs a nation that is anything but stable, and the nation now stands at an important crossroads. Will the Fatherland Front remain strong and lead Austria down Chancellor Dolphus' path to greatness, or will the Front collapse and give way to something new or even something old, in which we need to take this route because we would like to get down to dissolving the Heimwehr to get more non-aligned support. Because actually, with this uh, mod, I played this before and actually went down the legacy of Engelbert Dolphus, which was a lot of fun, and then we get to choose one of three paths, but we're only going to choose one because only one is currently at this time available, which is the repeal of the Habsburg's laws. And later on, there will be concessions to Republicans as well as descent into anarchy. But the next one will be dissolve the Heimwehr. The Heimwehr, well useful ones, but now they become a liability. <clears throat> These unruly extremists do not fit in with Schuschnigg's Austria. We are surrounded by enemies and a few friends. We cannot afford to allow the Heimwehr to antagonize the German-backed dudes within our border. They will be forcibly disbanded and the Heimwehr leadership will be arrested. The Federal State of Austria. It's been a year and a half since Engelbert Dolphus, the founder of the Fatherland Front and former Chancellor of Austria, was assassinated by Austrian... Uh, Nazis, but his absence is still felt to this day. Without his leadership, Austria continues to wrestle with the aftermath of the Great Depression, when many other European nations have long since started down the road to recovery. Our military still remains crippled by the Treaty of Saint Germain and Lye. Its size kept it a mere 30,000 soldiers. The German Reich to our north is practically salivating at the mouth, sensing our weakness, even as they go stronger with every passing month. Now the Italians floundering in the war with Ethiopia, our greatest allies no longer willing nor able to defend us. Things look bleak for Austria and the Fatherland Front, however. We know the Austrian spirit is unbreakable and that we will persevere through the trials ahead. Chancellor Schuschnigg may not be the leader Dolphus was, but he and the Fatherland Front are destined to bring Austria back to greatness. We will fend off Germany and secure Austria's position on the world stage as the leader of the Catholic world. Austria, awake for the Fatherland! Political power, and we have the national spirits. President Wilhelm Milkas. We have preserving independence, which hurts our pee-pee. Oh, no. And we can't even join factions. We have this Treaty of Saint-Germain on live. Hurts a recruitable population factor, which is why zero and less war support. We have the Great Depression. We're all very sad here. And then we have the Heimwehr, which gives us more political power and less damage garrisons, but kind of our stability, but oh well, in which we'll do an emergency cabinet meeting. Attempting to disband the Heimwehr has immediately turned out to be a terrible idea. The crackdown did not unify the moderates in our nation as we had hoped, and what's worse, the Heimwehr and its leadership has refused our demands. The supporters and paramilitary members have flooded the streets of in Vienna, and our police and soldiers, oh my apologies, are, <clears throat> and our police and soldiers are barely keeping them at bay. President Miklas, furious with Chancellor Schuschnigg's handling of the situation, has called for an emergency meeting of the Fatherland's Front's leadership to discuss the next course of action. With the Heimwehr and the open revolt, we have no choice but to make concessions to other political groups in Austria if we hope to restore order. And Turkey remilitarizes the Turkish Straits. I do want to let you know, though, that we are currently on historical. Historical, which is good, uh, just because I asked the mod developer if uh, whether historical or historical is better, and he said historical is the way to go, at least for now. So, ah, mechanical computing, thank you very much. And apparently these guys are really pissed off now. I guess I would be too, but after this, well, we will repeal the Habsburg's laws. Inviting Otto von Habsburg to return to the nation is the only logical choice. The timing also couldn't be much better. The current leadership of France and the UK seem unwilling to enforce many of its clauses in the treaties signed after the Great War, as can be seen by the unimpeded military buildup of Germany. With such a uniting figure at our helm, we are certain to quell the recent unrest, and who knows, maybe we'll soon have opportunities to return the empire to its former greatness, and President Miklas meets with his cabinet. The government is in a state of crisis since the Heimwehr refused to disarm themselves. President Miklas, Chancellor Schuschnigg, and the cabinet have decided to meet 
what the next course of action should be. Ultimately, they've come up with three plans. The first is to finally fully repeal the Habsburg laws and invite the Kaiser back. Hopefully, his return will allow us to bring the monarchists into our faction, giving us the numbers to get to the Heimwehr under control. The second option is to cave in and give some concessions to the Republican centrists and leftists. We would risk giving up our power in the free elections, but at least our combined numbers should be enough to break up the Heimwehr by force. Finally, there is a subgroup in attendance that says we shouldn't back down at all. After all, what can a bunch of drunk rednecks plan trying to play soldier actually do? Perhaps we're strong enough to crush the Heimwehr all on our own. Whatever we decide, we should do it so quickly. We have no time to lose. Wow, we got PP earlier, and we lost all over PP. It doesn't feel good to lose PP. All right, now what do we have? Unlocked. Oh, everything is taken away from us now. Oh, maybe we should have waited to do this. Oh, look at that. The People Party's victory. The Austrian Empire path will be unlocked. New national focus will be revealed. Follow in front victory. But return of the Kaiser. To the dismay of our enemies, our rightful ruler, Kaiser Otto von Habsburg, has returned to the throne of Austria. He brings with him an end to tyranny and chaos and the hope of a better future for the nation. Truly, the Kaiser will be unlike any of his ancestors, promising the draft of a democratic constitution and free elections to fill the seats of a new parliament. This comes as an unpleasant shock to the hardcore monarchists and conservatives, but the move brings some support from Republicans who are willing to overlook the return of the monarchy in return for elected leadership. Non-aligned party, inexperienced monarch. Oh boy, that doesn't look very good. Oh boy. Was he really blunt? Oh, a moderate Austro fascist. More political power, stability, daily fascist, and uh, unaligned support. And he dislikes Germany. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. But there he is. And we do have some coffee here to keep us nice and warm. And drink up. Oh, that's really hot, actually. Ooh. Technology is always good. The second London Naval Treaty has been signed. Very good, very good. Disperse industry because we can. Uh, the Vienna Address. Draft a new constitution. Ooh, yes. One of Kaiser Otto's first priorities is the creation of a new constitution for the nation. One that provides for democratic parliament, free elections, and limitations on the direct power of the Kaiser. For the first time in the history of our nation, the Kaiser will take a backseat in the running of the nation. Instead, he will focus more on creating unity amongst her people, acting as a beloved figurehead that is above petty politics. More political power and stability. Very nice. That's what we like. Because we can only get one, really, point one, one a day. Hey, look, there he is. Found him. Look at that mustache. Look at that hat. I love the hat. Cool. The Vienna Address. Ooh, military Police 1. A division template containing three infantry and a military police. I return to the Habsburgs. Cool. And we can remove anger to Heinbeer. Along with the return of Kaiser Otto von Habsburg, the extended Habsburg family has also made a return to their native homeland. Several of the more prominent Habsburgs who served in the Great War have requested that be ex they be accepted as officers in the army again. Obviously, we have agreed and given them positions befitting their noble status. Habsburgs lead from the front. Nice. From the Imperial Landsturm. The Heimwehr refused Chancellor Schuschnigg's demand that they disband, and they've since wrecked havoc across the nation. Our new Kaiser and his ministers have come up with a cunning plan to deal with this nuisance. Although the Heimwehr will remain disbanded, we will offer the former members acceptance into a new official state militia. This way we can put their zeal towards more useful endeavors, and we can bolster our own military strength. Not a bad idea. Um, I'm, because it's been a while since I played this, I'm just going to go with the tried and true superior firepower. We have no tanks. We have eight, nine divisions. Eight are infantry. One is horse. So overall, not too bad. And we don't even have command power. Oh, wait, because we have almost no war support. Hmm. That feels so good. So good. Christian Social Party. Huh. And then we'll do that VN address. My people, I know the past years have not been kind to you, but the dawn of a new day is on the horizon. A new democratic state will preside over the lands of Austria. Liberty and prosperity are our birthright. You will never again be subservient to the government, but the government will, shall be subservient to you. The empire shall return, but it will be a new empire. The mistakes of the past will not be repeated. The old and obsolete practices will not be brought back. Know that I do not take my position for granted, and in the coming months, I promise you will see that what I mean I say here today. A government is being created today that will make the people of Austria proud, and of the people of Austria proud, and I look forward to the first elections of our nation. From this election, we shall work together for a greater Austria. Hey, two more divisions. The Sicherungs division. So, six combo booth, not great, but you know what, we'll take them. We'll gladly take them for now. Have fun, guys, and don't cause too much mischief. 0.5 every single day. That's better than before. Hold elections. After careful preparations, the time has finally come to make good on our promises to hold free and fair elections for the nation's parliament. Already, several political parties within the nation are gathering new members in an attempt to find the first majority, or gain the first majority. The four main contenders are the Fatherland Front, the Far-Right People's Party, the Conservative Christian Social Party, and the Social Democratic Party. Each party has their own plans for the future of Austria and its place in the world. Now, I wonder who's going to win. 
Oh, look at that. The Marseille Elf Conference. Oh, limited conscription. That's, that'd be good. Reunification with Hungary. Ooh, I kind of like that. Oh, and then, oh, we got rid of some of the stuff. Nice. Very good. Are we mobilizing? No, we're not. We only have a core population of 6.6 .6 million, maybe. Ooh. Um, the people parties will be unlocked. New national focus will be revealed. Can we just go straight back? The Holy Roman Empire path will be unlocked. That's kind of cool. You know, I kind of want to go down with either the Social Democratic Party or the Christian Social Party. Cut spending. Oh, that's not bad. Deregulation of industry. Corporate tax cuts. Fiscal responsibility. We remove that. Not bad. Social welfare. Legalized trade unions. Nationalized industries. As well as the public good. Okay. Cool. Oh, and we have more technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, artillery. We could probably get some better artillery. Why not? Parliamentary elections. The Archduchy's first parliamentary elections are underway, with the turnout being very, very impressive. The four major parties running have different beliefs and plans for the future of our country, and it seems that is really anyone's race, due to them all having substantial voting bases to pull from. We can only wait with anticipation for the final outcome. Who will win a majority in Parliament? The follow in front, not playable, not playable. I'd love to do this, but apparently it's not playable yet, so... Ooh, wow. More daily political power gain and support for unaligned. Offensive war policy. Ooh, that's not bad. Offensive war penalty stability modifier of the Christian Social Party. Less consumer goods, more de daily democracy support. As well as the Social Democratic Party. Oh, you will become de democratic regardless. Ah, it's a lot of consumer goods. So good. So good to grab. All right, before we make a decision here. So, one of these two. Do we want civic duty with war sports, freedom, and liberty for all? Do we believe in liberty? I guess we do for this campaign. Stability... Ooh, a secular nation, egalitarianism, and education sets us free versus strengthen the nation's resolve. So you both get war support, increased military spending. Ooh, I kind of like that. Imperial parades, Catholic state religion. Ooh, Catholic state religion and democracy? Tr traditional values? Ooh. Ooh, that sounds kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. We might have to go with the Christian social party then. Ooh, I'm sorry for this one, but not really. I ain't sorry at all. If you'd like to read about this paragraph, please go right ahead. Um, there you go. And there's that. And there's that. And there you go. Cool. Nice. That's really cool. The Mausoleum Conference removes the National Spirit Treaty of St. Germain. Reunification is more likely to accept ever. Oh, of our social democratic parties in power. They are subject and in fact, with us, our army is stronger than theirs. They will never accept if they are communist. Reunification with Hungary. If the CSP is in power, they are subject, faction, stronger. Okay, that's cool. Um, let's make sure we're stronger first. The Marseille Conference. First upon us in the aftermath of the Great War, the Treaty of saint germain en laye imposes upon us cruel and unfair limitations and obligations. The most critical of these is a long list of restrictions in regards to our military. However, recent events presents a new opportunity to free ourselves from these shackles. The British would never endorse our rearmament, but the French have new and greater fears, mainly their two neighbors, Germany and Italy. If the French would approve, approve of our rearmament, in writing, then we could act as a deterrent towards German or Italian aggression. By demonstrating our newfound commitment to democracy, we should be able to convince the French that an Austria free of the obligations of the treaty is more in line with their interests than a weak and helpless Austria is. Nice. And this will do... Wait, wait what will we remove at the end? Le may lead to fascist Germany bypassing the Anschluss. No, focus. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's, let's go and focus on cut spending. There are certain government programs within a country that need to be ended before we can implement any of our economic reforms. Money spent on feeding and housing freeloaders could be better used elsewhere. Education is important, but ensuring that there are jobs for our young people to even have is even more important. No matter how painful it is, we have no choice but to tighten our belts and soldier on. Cutting wasteful spending is our nation's only path out of the Great Depression. Coffee, anybody? Yes, please. I want to have a much stronger army than Hungary's and then bully them till they so that they join us. And it's running pretty darn smoothly. I like it. I like it. This mod is a, is a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. The Marseille Conference. But the benevolent French have agreed to allow a rearmament. They seem to agree that they are that there are dangerous forces at work in Europe and that we'd make a good buffer against them. Whatever the reasons, we finally have control of our military again. Here's to our new French friends. How many divisions do these guys have? If we, the longer we wait, technically, the stronger they become. They have no manpower. What? How do they have to have 27 divisions? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Screw it. After this one, re reunification with Hungary. Like us, Hungary was punished severely at the end of the Great War. Like us, Hungary was made to suffer indignity, humiliation, and disgrace. Hungary is a kingdom without a king, forced into this endless contradiction by the powers in Europe. But we can offer them salvation, the chance to reclaim their former pride as members of the Empire together. We can take back what is ours and lead our two peoples to their destiny. 
So hopefully we can make our, our army just bigger, 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 bigger. So then they'll accept us, and then we get their divisions, and then we can bully the Czechs into joining us as well. And what do we have here, actually? Okay. Stahembug. All right. Minister of Justice. Not bad. I like the stability quite a bit. Education. Ah, foreign affairs. Minister of Finance. Not bad. Uh, ooh. Minister of the Interior. Not bad. I like the PP. I love the PP. Uh, stability. Popular figure. It's not pretty good. Pretty good. And it's Otto Skolzeny. I always think I said his name wrong. I probably do. Skorzeny? Skolzeny. All right. Let's beat up some uh, of these guys over here. They don't look super strong, but you never know. And after that, commission Hungarian offices. That'd be kind of nice. We'll see what happens. Corporate tax cuts, deregulation of industry, corporate tax cuts. Austria's economic growth has been incredibly stagnant for years due to mainly high corporate taxes imposed by the Fatherland Front to pay for military spending. Who would want to open a business here if they would just be taxed to death within a year? Massive corporate tax cuts will incentivize local and foreign enterprises to keep or bring their businesses here in Austria. We could easily afford the loss in tax revenue thanks to our previous spending cuts. Oh, we have to wait for this stuff. Oh. Yeah, I want more PP. Or, well, I want to get more PP. So we can only have how much? 0. 0.57. If you get plus 15%, you get at least point something. So. Hmm. Hmm. It's not that much, but once we remove preserving our independence, that'll be gone. Oh, and now more daily democracy support. Minister of President Ernst Stierlewitz. And the Great Depression. You think this guy is actually leading, but no, everything's still the Habsburg. Oh, they accept! A Hungarian delegation has officially accepted our request for reunification. Hungary will once again be a crown land of the empire where Otto von Habsburg will rule as our king. Cheers to the, our Hungarian brothers. Welcome home, my friends. Ooh, do we not get cores on them? Ooh, that is not good. But now we have an actually somewhat mighty army. It seems like it's probably best to go ahead and try to take these guys out as fast as possible, maybe. Because the longer we wait, the stronger they may become. I'd like to commission them, but reunification with these guys... The Kingdom of Bohemia and the people of Slovakia were once part of the Great Habsburg Empire, unfortunately. Our Kaiser's predecessors never gave either of them proper autonomy and equality, such as we did with the Hungarians. Is it any surprise that they were happy to have their independence at the end of the Great War? But times have changed. Europe is once again becoming a dangerous place in Czechoslovakia, as well aware of the threats both Germany and Poland pose to them. Given the promise of equality within our new empire, perhaps we, they will choose to join us with us once again. Together, we can protect all of our peoples from external threats that would otherwise crush us if we instead stand alone. Oh, we're not making any divisions. That might be a problem. Oh, these guys are eight combo with. That's not good. Oh, these are Hungarian guys. Hungarians like the military, right? Oh, template two. Oh, never mind. This one's better. Sorry, Hungarian guys. Maybe next time. And these guys are not bad. We have the Schneller divisions. So actually, Schneller divisions, you will do the. Ooh. Oh. You guys are early enough. Eight suppression. Lamstern Brigade has how much? Eight. These guys have 5.4, and they use support equipment 30, 340, 10. And then, then for these guys, they use 488, and no support equipment use. So, mm, let's take a look here. Civilian oversight, local autonomy for now. And let's see, manpower per suppression, 666. Manpower per division, 4,000, 666. These guys use 500, well, these guys use 648. So that uses more manpower per suppression. We want to use less manpower, ultimately. And this has better production cost, so... Yeah, I think that's what we got to do. So, do we get a core of this stuff eventually? Hopefully. Ah, yes! The United States of Greater Austria, hopefully. And we will commission those guys as well. But let's see what we can do with the Czechs. That's the big question. What are the Czechs going to do? Can we beat them up? Let's hope so. Can we duplicate this? Let's hope so as well. Do we have any other planes? We do want to make some bombers for this campaign. No cast this time. Tactical bombers, that's where it's at. It's probably a really bad idea, but we're going to grab that guy who gives more PP. I'm going to continue doing that. Oh, adds 20 victory points to V. Nice. The United States of Greater Austria. Gains more cores. Language barrier. Ooh, that is not good. But cores are mandatory. Very mandatory. Let's see what they do. Please, please, please. Come on. All right. Reunification. I want to see what happens first. They accept. A Czechoslovak delegation has officially accepted our request for reunification. Bohemia and Slo Slovakia will once again be crowned into the empire where Otto von Habsburg will rule as our king. Cheers for all Czech and Slovakian brothers. Welcome home. The United States of Greater Austria, though. 
Once convinced or conceived by ministers and scholars surrounding Ock Duke Franz Ferdinand in 1906, the United States of Greater Austria is a federalized form of the old empire, where federal states are formed based on the demographics of each region in the empire. Like a phoenix from the ashes, the newly united nations of Austria, Hungary, and Czechoslovakia have formed a new empire based on Ferdinand's plans and will make up the first states in the USGA. Federalization will not be easy, especially after so many years disunited, but we know in our hearts that we will persevere and find it in ourselves to work together for the betterment of all. Great. Love it. I don't like that language barrier, but we can deal with it. We can absolutely deal with it, because we got some Germans beat up. You, me, and just being up a lot of Germans. I want tankies. Actually, see, you guys are looking like what? Oh, God, there's six combat with. That is not good. Um, Infantry template one, goodbye. Schnella is eight, actually, so that's a little better. Ooh, the, the, uh, let's use the Huzier Dandir. I know I said that one completely wrong. Use a template that the Hungarians gave us. And you come over there too. Oh, never mind. My bad. My bad. I got rid of the army. There you go. Come back. You guys, that's fine. Just do that one. You guys are better. You, I want you to come here. My apologies for the screw up here. You and then you all become Hungarian. That's good. And not bad. Actually, I well, I actually might just make you guys infantry. Yeah, we don't want that, that big of a group to do stuff there. There you go. Nice. And you guys are... Oh, okay, you're actually 18 coming with. Actually, that's better. That's actually better. Yeah, we'll use the Czech divisions then. Because you guys are all what? 12? Yeah, no. Was it this one? I don't want to get confused. I don't want to get confused. I'm already, I'm already somewhat confused here already. So, that's fine. You guys all, but you two, become this one as well. And everyone here become that one as well. There you go. So nice. We can get rid of that. Get rid of that. Um, we would have the Schnellos, so that's fine. Cool. And these tank divisions are what? Eight combat with each. Not great, but they're definitely usable. What is that? Artillery leader? Artillery defense? I don't think I've seen that one before. That's really cool. Raus. Erhard Raus. Look at that regalia. Josef August von Habsburg. Yes, daddy. Now, I don't trust some Jerry's. The Germans, you, you just can't trust Germans. Usually. Sometimes you can. Yeah, but usually not. So, you never know what they're going to be doing. The German Reich denounces our annexation of the Sudetenland. The leadership in Germany were apparently furious when they heard that we had annexed the Sudetenland, something they have long hoped to accomplish themselves. If it isn't clear whether they intend to invade us at the, some point in the future, or they'll just let the matter drop, their opinion is irrelevant. I hope we can do well here. Ah, uh, I hope we can. It is still only 37, so we might have a chance. And with France backing us, we should do it totally okay, right? There we go. Give me more PP. Ah, uh, nah, that's much better. We went from 0.57 to 0.89. Sign us up. The People's Kaiser. He loses an experienced monarch. Daily compliance. I like that. Political power. Oh, Imperial Universities. Our benevolent Kaiser understands the importance of education for our citizens. He has agreed to cooperate with Parliament to establish and invest in a series of new Imperial Universities, starting with the Imperial University of Vienna. These universities, while challenging to get into, shall be tuition-free, ensuring that the most gifted of our citizenry is able to attain a quality education, regardless of wealth or personal background. This initial investment is sure to be paid back in spades thanks to the contributions of these educated citizens. I feel like I should help them out over there, but we have no manpower, so anyone we send is just going to die. That would not be very good, now would it? Oh, look at that flag. Beautiful. I love our slightly darkened white-gray United States of Greater Austria, but we're nowhere near where we have to be yet. Guns, gun it up. Bombers. We love bombing enemies. We're going to need a lot of this, too. And some of this, too. And a lot of that, too. We're going to need a lot of things here. Train your butts off. Train, 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 train. After that, strengthen the nation's resolve. Uh, we, we're going to commission these guys eventually. The People's Kaiser. After first returning to Austria, it was clear that bu the bumbling Kaiser was highly inexperienced and not prepared to suddenly be thrust into the lime limelight. However, with time, he has proven himself to be an inspiring figure and the symbol of unity that we all needed him to be. Given the, giving the responsibility of running the country to Parliament and his ministers, Kaiser Otto is able to focus solely on the morale and well-being of his people, ensuring near constant popularity throughout the realm. Maybe I should have waited to get more PP, but whatever. It costs an extra 37, which is not great, but hey, more compliance. Sign us up. A fourth research slot. Yes, daddy. Yes. Build, 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 build. Hindenburg disaster. Very good. I like the PP, 
Uh, actually, let me see. Okay, cool. We got some of these things here. We could probably get some of this. Actually, I might get the PP first to just go ahead and grab some dude here. Probably Otto Mike's Nirvan Weinstam. The Royal Radio Broadcast. Taking inspiration from the fireside chats conducted by President Franklin FDR, or President FDR of the US of A, a weekly radio program has been set up where the Kaiser himself will speak to his people. This will allow the Kaiser to become closer to his people than ever before, offering comfort and support to them within their own homes. These weekly talks are sure to be a hit that will foster further unity amongst our people, which is very, very good. SO37, construction speed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Language barrier. Oh, yeah, we have decisions. We can remove that, right? Reintroduce Army Slavic. If we choose this option, there's no way to completely remove the debuff. German language learning programs? Reduce severely over the next two years. Okay. Reintroduce Army Slavic. What does that mean? No, that's, not ta that's not too bad. That hurt a recruitable population factor, though, which sucks, but... I'd rather do the one that costs a little bit more. So, Royal Radio Broadcast. Oh, some divisions. Sign us up. Okay, can we beat up Germany immediately? I want to beat up Germany. We need more guns. But then again, when do we not need more guns? So we'll just wait to get up to here. It's only two, oh, that's actually double the cost, but whatever. That's fine. That's fine with me. And we'll have it soon. Corporate tax goes, which we'll do next. So we get some more civvies. Going down here is not bad. I like the extra political power. Democracy. Manifest destiny. Oh. Annex cost goes down. Can puppet. Can justify war goals. I like manifest destiny. Oh. Stability. This stuff is not bad, but we'll see. It is so 37. Let's get more cap. We love the cap. We have manpower? Oh, look at that. Not enough. Never enough. We have a core population of... 30... Almost 31 million. That's pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. Yeah, I want... I want more civvies. We want to build, 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 If I ever play this again, using the dreams of Austria... Oh, hello. There's stuff over here, too. Oh, all this stuff was unlocked. Nice. There goes China. Goodbye. Let's go and do this one first. We'll get rid of that as fast as possible. Follow it up with... Actually, oh, we can't go down there. Oh, we need more war support. Oh, my broken heart. Uh, military theorist, then. Actually, can we send volunteers? We're on... We're not aligned, so... Big sadness. Big, big sadness. Oh, wait, do we have a navy? I don't think we do, no. We have no ports. Darn it. Uh. And after this one... Oh, return to the world stage. I kind of want to do that. Removing our, Preserving our independence. Oh. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get rid of that one immediately. Return to the world stage. After addressing <clears throat> the most pressing of our internal issues and having reached an understanding with the French in the Marseille Conference, we can now start to shift our gaze outwards. We now stand strong and burdened by the darn Treaty of Saint-Germain and ready to meet the world. In the relatively short time since the Great War, the globe's political landscape has changed significantly, and we must play catch-up. Alliances must be forged, enemies confronted and contained, and influence spread if we hope to survive. And create our faction, the Danubian Defense Pact. Nice. Ah, civvies. Yes, sign us up. Renew the Franco-Austrian Franco alliance. Balkan partners. Interventionist doctrine. Oh, we can send volunteer forces. Oh, yes, I'll do that one next. The modern world is a tumultuous one. We ourselves have experienced this firsthand with both the return of the Habsburgs and much of our land in but a few short years. If we truly wish to prosper, we must be determined to not merely sit idly by, passively watching as history is made. We must instead be willing to play the geopolitical game so many other powers are already playing, and take an active approach to secure our nation's interests. Oh, the Austrian economy. I kind of like that one, too. I think we can kind of wait on this one. It looks like it's just a lot of blueprints. You don't get anything like factories or anything like that, so... Oh, you do get another research slot. That's really nice, though. But I think four is pretty good. Okay. Imperial Armed Forces. Oh. KUK reformed. Oh, wow. The new Imperial Army. Interventionist doctrine. Yes, please. And the USGA industrialization schemes. Oh, I like that one, too. Anything else on the further right? No, that's okay. Imperial Archive. Um, wow. Soldiers of the Alps. Expand battle plans. Mass assault. I guess we'll probably go, we want superior firepower, so we'll probably do a new Imperial Army, which makes sense, because we're trying to reform ourselves here, so. Mobile Warfare versus Screaming Squall. I like it when they scream. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of questionable to say that, but okay. Fighters? Yes, better fighters. Anything else? Dismantle the fort? No, I think we won't do that. I don't think we'll do that yet. Imperial Armed Forces, 9 Infantry, Engineer Support Company, and Support Artillery for free. Yeah, that might be bad to do immediately. I want to do all this stuff. Oh, we need that one too. We've ended the Great Depression. Enact the 11 states of reformation. Oh my goodness. We get another research slot. It cores on all the required states. 
Oh. Ultimatum for Transylvania. Strengthen the nation's resolve. Oh, there's so much here. I love it. I love it a lot. I love anti-air too. Grab synthetic oil. So, I think we'll strengthen the nation's resolve. Fiscal responsibility. Yeah, it's going to do that. De Deregulation of industry. The previous administration's corporate a corporatism has led to an incredibly inefficient industrial base. We produce goods our people do not need, and we are lacking the ones they do need. This inefficiency and poor direction has led many to to jobs needing to be cut to make up for the loss in profits. We should hand the reins of our industries back to the entrepreneurs and bankers so they can be turn, turn them back into cash cows. We love cash cows. And actually, let's take a look. We have our own little faction here. Uh, is Yugoslavia guaranteed by anybody? Ah, Romania. God darn it. Gosh darn the Romanians. Well, we'll take them out eventually. How about the Romanians? Are they guaranteed by anybody? The French. Ah, the French. Yeah, we could use more manpower. Hmm. Fiscal responsibility. Yeah, getting rid of this. Yeah, we want more stability back, so. Fiscal responsibility. A balanced checkbook as necessary not only for the common folk, but especially for the government as well. Thanks to Sherovitz's wise economic policies, Austria has done more than just balance a checkbook. It has finally conquered the Great Depression once and for all. The albatross has been removed from around her neck, and we are free to seize our imperial destiny. Very good. Can I send volunteers to China? I would like to get some more army XP. Yeah, how many can we send? Four? I don't want to send the tanks. The tanks are just, that's a bad idea. And the mountainous sites here. Actually, let's grab the mountaineers. Thank you, come again. And artillery defense would not be bad. Oh, Carl Agelsier, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, my developer, for allowing us to send volunteers as a non-aligned nation. That is just... So many mods don't let you do that, and it's just... Oh, it's so nice when you can. It's so nice. Oh, there goes Spain. Bye, Spain. Oh, cool. Italy announces claims on Yugoslavian territory, just like us. Deregulated industries. Cool. Alright, after that. Yeah, they're in Shanghai. Very cool. Um, rebuild the Habsburg Empire. We, they will become... Oh. Decisions to place Habsburgs on the thrones of various nations will be unlocked. Mexico? Ooh. They will become an Austrian op duchy. Increasing our control over their nation and increasing their manpower and industry that we gain from them. Liberate Germany. Ooh. The longer we wait, the stronger the Germans become. Could we actually fight the Germans? That's a lot of manpower compared to us. That's a lot of divisions. We do have the forts, though. That's not bad. Mm. Do they have these things bypassed already, though? We can't tell. Hmm. It might be best to wait. It might not be best to wait, though. I get. I like more war support. I want to do Manifest Destiny, but it might be best to wait. Bring democracy to the Balkans. Oh, that'd be really cool. And the mo Communist Menace. You get the Balkan Partners, though. Uh, but I'd say the alliance. That'd be really good to do. Send military attaches. Well, I, what I want to do is come down here and get the new Imperial Army. So the Imperial Armed Forces. Now free from the restraints of the Treaty of Saint-Germain, the composition of our military is in our control again. There's much work to, work to be done, with all three branches of our military in desperate need of modernization and expansion. We know the men of the Empire are up to the task, and that someday soon we will return honor and glory to our people. That'll be super, super important, just because we get another division for free, which is nice. But the Imperial Army... Super necessary. Very good. Um, artillery defense. Franz Boom. Oh, winter expert. I like. I love adaptable. Go offensive because we're probably gonna need that too. Nice. Um, where are we? Oh, they are attacking. They're gonna attack Beijing eventually. So let's do that. Just don't lose too many guys, please. Please. Oh, we could go there. We need more than 25% war support. How do we get more war support more quickly? This won't give us war support. Oh, actually, technically we could wait. And then we could do this one, strengthen the nation's resolve first, before we do that. The USGA is of the, one of the strongest nations in Europe, and yet there are still great external threats to our existence. Germany, Italy, and Russia would stand all to gain if our empire were to fall once again. Our nation must have strong resolve and a stiff upper lip if we are to face the challenges that lie before us. The formation of the USGA is not the end, it is only the beginning. Nice. So we get 25%. Then we can go to the, was it, partial mobilization? Which is really good to get, so. That is super, super important. And we get 30% more stability once we get rid of this thing, so. That'll be very, very nice. 82% stability, sign us up. Guys, you don't need to attack like crazies. Please don't attack like crazies. Please, for the love of God, don't do that. Oh, do this one too. 
Yeah, it's 38. Happy 1938. Everyone, hope you're having a great year. 1514. German literacy improves. Ah, uh, German language programs have shown remarkable success. More and more of our population can speak fluent German. Uh, flu especially amongst the younger generations. Having a common language is improving the function and efficiency of our military and our bureaucracy. We're making progress. Nice. Even better. Look at all those guns we got. Nice. So we will need way more artillery because I, I love Artie. Artie is so good. And we're just here to hang out for now and not die too hard. Cool. The Mountaineers, we'll probably do these guys first. Um, you can convert these guys to hit them hard, even harder. Uh, you know what? Can we add one more? We'll make them like this first. That'll make them really hard to get rid of. Especially if they have artillery, so they can do a lot of extra damage. There you go. We'll probably make these guys 40 combo with later on. And after we do that one, then we'll come... Oh, Austrian economy is not bad. I like that one too. Uh, yeah, then we'll do this one. And then we'll do a new Imperial Army. The Imperial Armies of old were far from what they could have been. Rather than looking to the past, we should instead focus on the present and beyond. By implementing sweeping reforms, our generals are confident that we'll be able to dramatically increase effectiveness. This new Akazalisha Ami, as it's being called, shall focus on well-equipped and well-trained soldiers. Our recruitment efforts will be focused on the strongest, smartest, and most driven. By tailoring our efforts, we shall ensure that this new Imperial land or army will be a model of professionalism and competency for all of Europe to admire. Because I want the extra population too. Very good. Let's hop on over to partial mobilization because we can't go here yet. Nice. That is so 38, which is awesome, awesome. Uh, planes, bombers. Keep making them civvies. We have all this land we can improve. That is good. I actually build that there as well, but eh, we're okay for now. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Army, hopefully you keep training and doing well. Dig in, dig in. Trains to get some more army XP. We have a lot of support equipment, which is nice. They're not quite attacking us yet, but Japan eventually does, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, oh, what is next? What about military staff? Offense is not bad. 10% defense is not bad. Speed. Natural victory in the Spanish Civil War makes sense. Hop it over here. Nice. Oh, I like Materna. I always get Materna because it's just so good. Entrenchment speed is always okay. It's not really super necessary. Ship stuff? We could probably focus on ship stuff a little bit. Better panzers, because I do want to get at least and use a few panzers. We get some planes up here too, technically, as well. We don't have that many planes, though. We can only send 87. Do we have, how many planes do we have in this reserve? Uh, there you go. Yep, as long as we're getting army XP, or air XP, I guess, technically. There you go, good luck. You're gonna need it. You're really gonna need it. The new Imperial Army. We do have some manpower as well, but that's probably best to wait. Oh, China. China, 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 China. The Screaming Squall. You can't describe the moral lift when in the fight your spirit's weary. Here above the hostile fire, your own artillery. Shells score the air like wavy hair from a forward battery. As regimental cannon crack while from positions further back, and bittersweet song overhead, crashing discordantly. Divisions pounding joins the attack, mother like she belches shell, glorious it flies and well as with a hissing screaming squall. A roaring furnace giving all, she sears a path for the infantry. Army XP, and this is a problem from somewhere. Is it from World War One, maybe? And superior firepower, of course. Which is probably still the best in the game, but we'll see what happens in the future. Alright, up next, political advisors, stability would be really nice. Uh, construction speed, I like that. 15% is not bad. Legitimacy gain, huh? Construction, 10%, ain't too bad. Political power, I like the political power, but we're not going to need that eventually, so... Hmm. Hmm. No, can't lower that either. Fighter stuff, no, nothing here too much. Uh, it is 38. <sighs> Defense, I mean, we could always just go ahead and grab Materna, but... Hmm. 1.36 is pretty good already. Mm. But more stability. That Getting more stability is just so nice. Ah, screw it. We'll get him. Why not? 1.53 is not bad. 92% stability is very good. We're a very stable nation here. So after that, I want to focus on something else. Balkan partners, perhaps? An increasingly aggressive Italy to the south is starting to raise concerns, both here and abroad. They continue to post 
posture more and more, and they seem to seem keen on eventual Balkan dominance. This simply will not do. The Balkans belong under Austrian influence and protection to this end. We'll reach out to Bulgaria and Greece to offer them a formal invitation to our alliance. Mutual defense and cooperation will be good for all involved. I can probably this one too. Ooh, yes. Eventually we'll do USGA industrialization schemes. The Habsburgs' domains have historically lagged behind most of the great powers of the world in terms of industry, and this problem continues to plague the state in the wake of the Great Depression. In order for us to quickly build up our industry and infrastructure to properly match our great, powerful neighbors, we must engage in a three-phase economic development plan and spare no expenses. Let's get these guys first. Oh, Bulgaria pro approached the Reich first. Oh, man. Oh, they actually broke through. Look at that. Yeah, guys. Are you actually winning here? Eh, technically, yeah, they are. Eventually, they weaken themselves so much that they can't really fight back, but, yeah, you never know. There you go, you can use that too. Eh, don't spread out too thinly, guys. That's not good for you. The Danubian Defense Pact. Nice. How are the civvies? Oh, we're building some infrastructure, which is nice and all, but maybe we'll start throwing in a milli or two. There you go. Keep making some millies. We're going to need a lot of them. we got plenty of guns, which is great, but eventually we're going to need a little bit more. Oh, oh anti-air is good as well. Just make one. We'll be fine with that. More cannons. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, infantry division. Look at that. Well, that's a cool template. Duplicate template to modify. Huh. I'm glad I didn't touch this one too much yet, then. This is pretty cool. You know what? Make them like that. There you go. And anything else here? Armored. I usually like doing that, but we can wait probably for that one first. And let's do this one. More consumer goods, thank you. Bulgaria joins our alliance. Bulgaria has accepted our proposal and have joined us in a formal alliance. Together we can reclaim lands that are rightfully ours. As well as the Kingdom of Greece has joined us as well. Which means we're going to be pissing off the Italians very, very soon. Or we already have. The German Reich claims Mamel. When Germany goes to war with Poland, we'll probably go to war with them as well, so. Not bad. Then you'll be a defense pact. And we'll probably need some more divisions to beat up the Italians as well, so. Let's go ahead and do goodbye. And then, uh. There you go. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, literacy improves even more. Great. 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 Nice. 38. Not bad. Ship stuff. We can focus on that later on as well. Armor we're still working on. We might need some field hospitals. So let's see that one. Feeding machine. Radar. Very good. And what do we have here? Enter our bombers. Thank you. We already have 42. Our air XP. Not bad. Um, what's next? Monthly population's okay. Oh, always okay. It's not great. I like the construction speed, though. I like it quite a bit. You know, let's just do that just so we can just build, build, build it slightly faster. Oh, we got the military factory done? No, we didn't. Lies. Lies of the Jedi. Phase 2. Phase 1. Change begins at home, and where better else to inaugurate our sweeping economic plans in the heart of the Habsburg domains? Phase 1 will reinforce Austria's industrial capabilities and infrastructure so that we can further fund phases and let Greater Austria ultimately prosper. Aw yeah, build, build, build. It is 38, so what do we want next? Planes are good. Working on all the stuff. Actually, I might grab that one, but I never do that. It's not super necessary. Synthetic oil experiments, we'll definitely have to do that one later on. And better tanks? Awesome. How are we doing over here? Are we getting attacked yet? No, they're pushing in still. Why are you being this crazy, guys? Why? I know you can be this crazy, but you don't have to be this crazy. But if you're winning and doing well at it... Oh, what is wrong here? Oh, attrition is really bad. Ooh, that is not good. There you go. Oh, that is really bad over there. No wonder they start losing. Oh, baby boy. Oh... Civvies, infrastructure, frenzy. I like that. Federal work program, 35 days. That's not bad. Uh, decentralized command. New artillery pieces, support technologies, killing zones. I like that. Small unit leadership. There's so much I want to do here. We'll focus on this stuff later on. Um, manifest destiny, we'll do that one. Manifest Destiny was a cultural belief held by American settlers that it was America's destiny to expand across North America. Like those settlers, the people of the USGA know it is their destiny to liberate all of our brothers from the tyrants of the Balkans and to reclaim our former lands, Yugoslavia. Italy, Romania, and Poland have all stolen from us. We will show them that this insult will not go unpunished. Very good. Yeah, don't worry about going over there, guys. Like, it's, it's real bad over there, so. No one can blame you for not wanting to go over there. Can we get some more? Oh, yes, we can. We're doing well against the Japanese planes. I mean, this is kind of weird, but I'll take it. Nothing else over there. And then, 
Ultimatum. Austrian ultimatum. If they accept, they give us all Transylvanian states as well as Bukovina, and they refuse, we'll gain a war goal against them. If the subject and army is stronger, uh, Slovenia and Croatia. Lembity, uh, let's do ultimate M for Transylvania. Who can say that Transylvania is not Hungarian? Since the days of our old empire, it has been a key strategic and resource-rich region. It is perhaps that for that same reason that the Romanians decided to backstab us and take it for themselves. A reckoning is coming for Romania. Oh boy, we might get up in conflict with them. Oh boy. But well, we welcome that conflict. You guys are doing fine. You guys. Let's head on over to Romania. Let's see what happens. Because they're still guaranteed by the French. Free trade treaty with Germany, huh? Industrial concerns. Let's go with in industrial stuff. Nice. Oh, yeah. We might have a bigger army than them. Maybe? How big are they? Okay, the second. Oh, 49 divisions. That's not bad. A lot of manpower, but we still have some, too. And then preserving your way of life. Democracy. Hmm. I like that more stability. And more population. Increased military spending is not bad. But let's go ahead and do instead funding frenzy. No cost is too great in expanding Austri greater Austria's economy. We'll lavish Austrian domestic industries with funds and supports for up to a full years so that we can further headway into our economic plans. I lied. No. Oh, armored core. War games. Uh, new artillery pieces, actually. Our military has languished since the end of the war, resulting in much more of our equipment. Especially artillery pieces being outdated and barely functional. Looking at the designs of the French and the Poles could give us the inspiration needed to design our own guns. Yes, I want to do that one first, because I want to wait. And I'm going to put you guys down here, so. You never know what the Italians are going to do. And we do want Tyrol back. Artillery. Oh, I like this. Yes, attack and defense. Yes. They refuse their demands. Oh, boy. The Kingdom of Romania thinks their threats are empty and that we have no way to back up those are threats. They have outright refused to cede any of the contested territories. Let us show them just how foolish their decision really is. Our people will be liberated one way or another. But unfortunately, they're guaranteed by the French, right? So, I don't want to piss off the French yet. Hmm, that's big sadness hours, man. That's real big sadness hours. I wonder if we can pressure the Yugoslavians next. We can try to pressure everybody. You might as well, right? <clears throat> our coastline in the Adriatic lies in the hands of the Serbs. Though not our most faithful subjects throughout history, there are still loyalist elements and those that hate the Serbs within Croatia and Bosnia that will be willing to take up arms for the Kaiser should the ultimatum we send not be accepted. Serbia shall pay for its treachery one way or another. Nice. Another division? Garrisons? Yes. Military police. Good. We're running out of things to build? I don't think so. Cruisers are nice. Alright, get start working on, uh, seriously on some millies, so that'll be good. Even though I do want to at least have one line of civvies at all times as well. And, alright, that sounds like a good idea. There you go. There you go. That'll work hopefully pretty darn well for us. And we do have a good line against the uh, Italians. Come on, let us threaten the Yugoslavians. And does this is expire? It does not, and that's very good. I don't want to do these guys yet just because Poland needs as much strength against Germany, but ultimatum for Lombardy and Veneto. Mussolini and his fascist Braunschers have claimed that they are successors to the Roman Empire of old. It is a lofty ambition, one that we intend to shatter. We shall demand our former territory of Lombardy, Tyrol, and Venice, strategic ports that give us access into the Adriatic and, in turn, the Mediterranean. Hopefully that will give it up without a fight, but if they refuse, we will gladly bring them the vengeful destruction they deserve after the betrayal in the Great War. Nice. Ah, yeah, German literacy further gets better. What? Alright, we have two weeks left, which is totally fine. And we're making civvies pretty darn quickly. I love it. We definitely need more... Well, our artillery is looking not too bad. These guys are pretty good, but we're going to make these guys 40s. Even though we don't have the armix before it yet, so... Let's see. Did we make them? Yes, we did. Good. One, two, three, four. We need 20 more army XP to finish that out. That's just good. And we'll come down here just in case. Grab Materna just in case. You never know what's going to happen. And then we'll do Italy. They bowed our demands, as they should. Yugoslavia has made the wise decision to give up the contested territories without a fight. Our soldiers are free to move in and secure the area for the coming civilian administrators. Our people have returned to us. Wow! Now that's nice. And we have... Oh, compliance gain is disabled. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Act. Nice. Very good. 
Ooh, and these guys wanted to refuse it. We might have an opening there. Um, if that's the case, we gotta be ready for this, too. <sighs> Very good. And we, while we don't have cords on them, we'll get cords on these guys eventually. Um, we can weaken these guys a little bit more. Ah, we do it, why not? The Kingdom of Galicia Ludomeria is only one of many that the crown then stolen from us at the end of the Great War. It is true that most in the region are ethnic Poles, but it is also part of our empire for so long that it is unjustifiable for them to have been torn from us. Poland is surrounded by nations who would love to take them down at peg. Could they really afford to refuse their demands? They will say yes, and we'll say goodbye and die. Nice, keep building, 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 building. Nice. We're going to need more divisions here too, so. There you go. Now we're going to need another group down there too. We have no duckers yet, huh? Italy says, probably no. They say no. Our people will be liberated one way or another. That sucks. And we can't do this one yet, because we can take out Italy, and we'll have to take out Germany and Romania, which is totally, totally fine with me. The Austrian economy, the navy, I will really want to do... I want to get through this as fast as possible, maybe. Superior power, block, power doctrine. We don't really have to, though. We can kind of wait. Division attack. Meritocratic expansion. So we could probably wait on that stuff. Uh, the Imperial Navy's not bad. Small start. That's not bad either. Uh, federal work programs. Eh, that stuff is okay. But provide industrial support. It's no secret that our industry dwarfs that of our allies in the Balkans. They have remained much more Agarian and could certainly use some investment in aid, luckily for them. That is something we are willing to provide. We are, after all, paternal figure to the Balkans here to guide them, teach them, help them grow. We will reach out to offer loans to speed up their industrialization, as well as provide incentives to our domestic companies incur to encourage them to open up shop abroad. Good. So it's always good to help out your allies. Well, usually. Not always, but usually. Are we missing guns or something? Fighters. We're missing fighters. Oh, we're missing... Ah, oh, man, Paolo. Alright, then we'll go raise the conscription level soon. Oh, they're down there too. Oh, boy. Oh, wait, why are we all down here? Turkey delivers an investment portfolio. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. This usually happens every, you know, campaign. If they need aid, then you can have it then. So be it. Invest in them. We can bind them into our interests while simultaneously alienating them to our allies? Okay. Oh! They say no, we attack them. Cool. They refuse their demands. Oh, this is, this, this is kind of early. Are we are we ready to go to war too? Zog submits to Italy, which does open up another border for us, so that's not good. But we can probably isolate them, so... Oh, we need a war goal against these guys. Oh, hmm. Well, instead of this one, yeah. Liberate Germany. Like us, Germany spiraled towards authoritarianism in the aftermath of the Great War. However, unlike us, they've not had the strength to overcome it. This is not only unfortunate for the German people, but dangerous for our own. It is certainly no good for us to be adjacent to the state with the values so antithetical to our own, especially such a powerful one. Therefore, drastic steps must be taken to return Germany to the Republic it once was, however. When the tyrannical giant is slain, the new Republic will remain under our supervision to ensure that this new German Republic is more durable than that of the failed Weimar. I should have done this one earlier, but that's alright. And if Poland dies with them, then we get their territory. Oh, crap, they joined the Allies. I should have went. I should have done this a little bit faster. Yeah, I should have done this faster. It's alright. Apparently, we got to kill the Allies now, which means we're going to need a Navy. We're going to need a really competent Air Force, but with this campaign, I think we'll probably relatively easily be able to do such things. So, not too worried about that. Plenty of already. Um, how are we doing with our soldiers here? Chinese Volunteers looking pretty okay. They're, they're taking a beating a little bit, but they should be doing relatively okay. Just win on the defense. That's the most important thing to get more army XP right now. 40 combat width. Need at least a little bit more love, like we all do probably. And boom. 10 more army XP. Not bad. German Reich is doing well. Come on. We should have... Yeah, uh, I should have done this one earlier. German pressure towards the Benelux. Oh, we have to wait another week. Poland might die before then, which would open us our entire lower border there. But if we can rush their VPs, I think we should do relatively okay. Go in immediately, and we will do this one. Provide industrial support. Go, go, go! And we should probably stop training our guys. There we go. Take everything they got. Pin down their soldiers. Don't let them move. Um, sure, for now, that's fine. You can all come on in if you want. 
So we lost about a thousand. Oh, and actually, let's go and just do. Poland's almost dead. 20,000 losses. Mostly to Poland. We've suffered quite a few. The fall of Warsaw. Oh, crap. That was a bad idea, maybe. That was probably a really bad idea, then. They declared war on the Netherlands, which is not... Which is good for us, but still. Well, yep. Maybe I, I definitely should have done this a little bit faster. Everyone hold. And I'm just going to go and throw you guys over here, too. That is fine. Whatever. You know, things happen. Wait, no. Oh, well, Italy joined the Axis. Well, that sucks. Well, you're coming back then. I might have screwed the pooch on this one. Uh, we should be okay there. There you go. Good luck. Belgium joined the Allies. Alright, that's good to see as well. We are slowly doing not great, but that's okay. Things happen. Uh, U24, U4. Actually, if you're going to come down here, uh, they're moving into there. Just go join that group. That's fine. Any more uh, volunteer planes? That'd be very good. Uh, where are planes at? Oh, they're in Crete. Okay. Wow, they're veterans. That's nice to see. And we're definitely screwing up here. My bad. Losses. Oh, we definitely need more manpower. Well, we've killed off 14,000. We've taken quite a few more casualties than I expected. And I really should have gone a little bit faster than what I did, so... They're slowly winning against us somehow. Which is not very good, obviously. I'll go ambusher, why not? Oh, this is not good either. Hmm, I think what I'm going to do... I might just go ahead and replay this a little bit off-screen. Just to make sure that uh, we go attack a little bit faster, maybe. Do what is right. Do what is hopefully okay. Oh, oh, guys. What are you doing over there? 19 to hold divisions. No, 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 no. You don't need the USSR to defend against those guys for now. Eventually, yes. But for right now, no, 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 no. Yeah, we still might do okay. Especially... Oh, they broke through the line. That's not good. Well, they're still attacking. They've definitely taken more casualties now, which is nice. Uh, do we have enough equipment? We do have enough fuel. That's good. Provide industrial support. We still might have this. We still might have this. Let's see. Hmm... France is not fully independent yet. What do we want? Support technology, planning speed, that's not really going to help us. Preserve a way of life, stability, and increase military spending. A strong military is of the cornerstones of any true conservative government. Europe is not only a safe place to be, and we cannot count on others to protect us from greedy neighbors. Investing more of our government funds into the expansion of our armed forces is necessary to secure a position in Europe and the world. Which is very true. They are slowly pushing it. It is very, very not good. But Germany should get bogged down at least in the Balkans. Or not Balkans. The those guys over there. So. Yeah, I really wasn't ready. I should not have done that earlier. Oh, baby. But they're definitely paying for it. They are definitely paying for it in some places here. That's fine. Especially with Italy here, too. Ooh, not good. Oh, they have an open hole there, too. That's not good. Um, why do we have another line here? Ah, that was these guys' lines. There you go. Go to where you need to go. And we're slowly losing a little piece of territory here and there. It is what it is, you know? Things happen. Things totally happen. But they kind of stopped attacking us a little bit. And they're still attacking up here and over here, which is not very good, obviously, but still. Things happen, you know. Oh, that sucks. And Germany's lost quite a few guys. Quite a few. Over 90% German literacy. We have done it. Nine of our... Ten adults in our nation can now speak German fluently. While there are some especially older folks who can't speak German well, enough of our population does that everything is running smoothly again. Now, any of our citizens can go anywhere within the empire and be able to communicate with their fellow countrymen with ease. This will further unite our people. And now we've already killed almost roughly an equal amount of Germans to our own soldiers. More defense, better guns, that'll be good. But now th their advances have actually slowed down and they're getting pushed out of the Netherlands a little bit, so... And while they're taking this territory up here, which is not very good for us, it is what it is. You guys go over there. All we gotta do is hold on for now. And Imperial Brigades? Yeah, we'll get some more war support. 
The military is more than just an iron fist which we use to impose our will on others. It can also serve as a source of inspiration for our people, looking at the faces of Imperial soldiers as they march down the streets of Vienna, Budapest, and Prague. They're not only German faces, but the faces of Hungarians, Czechs, and other minorities of our nation. None represent the diversity and strength of our empire so much as the soldiers who fight to defend it. Man, they are just very strong. Very strong. Hmm, I'd like to get Munich back, but we'll see what happens. How much manpower do they have left? Because... Eh, look at Poland. Poland's there. You guys sell quite a bit. Stockpile. They have plenty of equipment, so we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Don't worry about attacking. Make them pay for everything that they're trying to take from us. No, I'm going to say force defense. Ah, more divisions. Good. Uh, we can do this against Italy, but really, you guys need all these guys. Now that should definitely help us out, no matter where we are at. Disperse industry is good, and let's grab some more cap. You're not entrenched here, so goodbye. Oh, yes. I'll take some good stuff. And they're really attacking us incredibly hard. Why are they not attacking these guys? Oh, I guess they are. Alright, they open up another front. Good for you guys. And Norway. Look at this. Sure, guys. Would you like to join the faction? Why not? Okay. <laughs> not great. Not bad. But we should still do relatively okay here. But I think we'll end this episode here. And let's go ahead and read one more focus. Let's see. What do we want? For God and Kaiser, stability would be pretty good to grab. Um, let's go ahead and get some... What? Another tank template, Royal Arm Corps. The Panzer is the crucial element of the modern armies of Europe. They are also an element we find ourselves rather sorely lacking in. We should designate a new armored corps within our army, trained in the usage of these war new war machines. Our Panzer divisions will be supported by motorized groups of infantry, easily able to keep pace with the Panzers and provide defense when more speedy or maneuverable actions are necessary. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow when we will hopefully beat the Germans and do relatively okay. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.